is Wendy, your sister in Christ. Hello to all my brothers and sisters in Christ out there. I have an update on the past few months that uh, King Yeshua has been working in my life. That first, all praise, power, glory, honor to you, my glorious God, the Holy Father, the Holy Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen and amen. So I have this typed up. I'm going to be looking down a lot. Um, and I want to thank you for everyone who has contributed to his ministry. And I'm still learning more things about his ministry, as you will uh, hear in this message. So as I started recording different bits of information and putting them all together as huge confirmations from King Yeshua, I also began writing about the last few months of how King Yeshua continues to be, has been, and always will be my commander, director, companion, best friend, bridegroom of my life. For I have surrendered all to him forever. And I am ever so happy that my God is perfect in every way. God, who is the glorious Holy Father, the glorious Holy Son, and the glorious Holy Spirit. And that God holds my life in his everlasting hand. As I was writing yesterday, <clears throat> it finally dawned on me, yesterday meaning June 24th, I have been trying to get this video out, video out for quite a while. And... I have been using my phone, but I ran out of memory. So, uh, as I was grappling with that, um, King Yeshua had me go out and get a rather inexpensive video camera. So, that's what I'm using now. So, hopefully, I can get this message out now. Um, so, as I was saying, as I was writing yesterday, it finally dawned on me that he wanted me to write this and that he was telling me to post it afterwards. So I will give details of what he has been doing in my life. I have had much difficulty, as I explained, I, I typed this out last night, uploading this video as my phone has now run out of memory. <clears throat> I tried each time to record on it, but it was stopped due to no more memory. King Yeshua told me last night that he wanted me to get a non-expensive video camera and a laptop for my laptop does not work correctly on the internet. That this is for the ministry he has called me to, so this is why I have been using my phone. I am finding out that this ministry will be composed of many parts as it seems. He has written a word for me to post, and I will post it as a separate video. On February 23, 2015, I have to bear with me because I do not see my toolbar. He began to give me the messages that you have seen posted on the YouTube and the Facebook site. <clears throat> and um, about what is going to be taking place very soon as the end of his era is here. After he finished giving me those messages, he wanted me to write my testimony, which is he... I'm sorry, I can't even write my typing, read my typing, which is what he had me put on the YouTube site because it was too large to put on Facebook. Well, very soon after that, King Yeshua began to give me personal messages for other people at my work. Sometime during this, King Yeshua began giving me the scripture, Matthew 10:16, Behold, I send you forth as sheep in the midst of wolves. Be ye therefore wise as serpents and harmless as doves. It is extremely hard to just walk up to someone and tell them, I have a message from the Lord Jesus for you, especially in the workplace. But that is what he wanted me to do, so I delivered each message. He told me that he has highly anointed me and that he has ordained me as a messenger and prophetess. He also told me that I have a mantle which is 1 Peter 4.17, 
For the time has come that judgment must begin at the house of God. And if it first begin at us, what shall the end be of them that obey not the gospel of God? I kind of knew what mantle meant, but I looked it up to see clearly what he was saying to me. A mantle is a spiritual anointing and authority. All praises to King Yeshua's holy and righteous name. He had told me that I must read each message to the individual person and not to just hand them the message. All listened but one. Some were really excited and wanted to hear his message. And I'm not sure what the others were thinking. Only God knows people's hearts. Sometimes during these messages, he had also given me another message to take to the church I used to go to. I will not disclose the name of the church or the contents of the message, but I can tell you that they deny the movement of the Holy Spirit and his spiritual gifts for edification of the church. I was to deliver that message to the pastor of the church and let him decide if he would let me give the message to the congregation. For if so, I had to be the one to read it to them. I did not deliver it on the day that King Yeshua had originally wanted me to, for he had given me another week. My daughter had just gotten married that same week, and he knew that it would take a lot out of me to deliver that message. He is telling me at this very moment that this is his permissive will as I am writing this. I was truly grateful to him for giving me extra time. Months earlier, I was hearing in my spirit that I would be doing something like this at the church. Either the night before or a few nights prior to me giving the message to the pastor, King Yeshua warned me that things don't always work out the way I think they should. Well, the day came for me to deliver the message to the pastor. Let me tell you, I can't begin to describe how nervous and frightened I was. While I was waiting, I began to sing praises to my holy God, and I heard the Holy Spirit tell me to say that I was under the anointing of the Lord Jesus before I delivered his message. I was not met with open arms by the pastor, but his wife was ever so nice. King Yeshua had told me to begin with telling him I had a message from the Lord Jesus to him and the congregation, that if he did not approve of me reading the message to the congregation, that their blood would be on his hands. Then I was to read Acts 2.17 and also read the mantle that he gave me. I could feel the great displeasure of the pastor and was nervously reading. He stopped me before I could read him King Yeshua's message. I will tell you that I couldn't wait for the Holy Spirit to tell me to leave as the pastor spewed all sorts of things at me. But I did not cry. Finally, I heard the Holy Spirit say for me to leave. And as I was leaving, I told the pastor that I loved him in Christ. At that point, I don't know how I had the sense to say anything, for I was so distraught. I know it was the Holy Spirit that had said that. As I entered my car, the tears began to flow. I couldn't leave the church parking lot fast enough. I could barely see the drive. And I know that he took over and got me to a place where I felt safe enough to stop. He began to break down the words that the pastor was saying to me. Telling me, first of all, the pastor was saying how the Lord doesn't use women to deliver any messages. And King Yeshua said that I, which is me, No, that is not true, for he is using me and has been using women to do his work. Secondly, he brought up the pastor saying that the gifts of the Holy Spirit ended in the apostolic era, the time the apostles were were living. And King Yeshua told me that I know that is not true, because I, me, have the spiritual gift of prophecy. He said it ever so eloquently and consoled me, more than I could ever describe in this writing, I am not even coming close to doing justice to what he told me. Finally, he said that he was so sorry I had to listen to the vicious poison that spewed from the pastor 
and that he sent me as a lamb among the wolves. I didn't know exactly why he pulled me out of that church. All praise, power, and glory go to my beautiful King Yeshua. He also told me that he prevented me from crying in front of the pastor. He calmed me down and made me feel so much better. What a most painful experience that I know that things weren't the way I thought they were in that church. I prayed for the pastor and the congregation. All right, so back to my work. As I was delivering his messages, one of the nights he had told me that they were about to end. And i got to keep an eye on the time because this only gives me 25 minutes at a time. So I knew it wouldn't be much longer. Another night after that, he began to tell me that my work will try to censor me doing what he wants me to do. He began to tell me that my work will try to, uh, and I will have a choice to listen to what they say or to follow him. I told King Yeshua that I will follow him wherever he tells me to go. That day came on April 14, 2015. I was completely caught off guard. I just wasn't expecting it that soon. I must say that my boss was so great about the whole thing. She prayed for me during our meeting. She is a great woman of God, and so is my co-worker. However, where I work at has a chain of command, and she could only do so much. The censoring was already beginning. I didn't know what to tell my boss, only that King Yeshua had told me this was coming and that I trust him completely. After the meeting, I left early that day, and I also took the, the next day off. I believe I was in a fog, but I know that he was right there with me. I prayed and prayed. However, that evening, he had told me that I would have a big confirmation, for he had told me that my two weeks' notice began that next day, April 16, 2015, and I would be leaving my home and my husband. Our marriage still, it still needs some healing. I woke up the next morning and I had such peace, the peace that surpasses all understanding. Philippians 4, 7. I believe even more so than I have ever had in the past. I knew that I knew that I knew that was what he wanted me to do. So that morning I had another meeting with my wonderful boss and I told her what was going on that I didn't know all the pieces, as he would only give me little bits of information at a time, but that I was to give my two weeks notice effective that day. Well, during my two weeks, he kept giving me <clears throat> some more information each night. I found out that he was sending me to my mother's house. I need to back up. During the time he gave me the message to the church, he told me to look up where Rick Warren lived at. I had no idea, so I looked up where the church is, and it is in California. At that point, he said that I would be delivering more messages to more churches across America. I'm not sure of exactly when, after this, that he began to give me visions of him sitting on the driver's side of an RV camper, waving to me out the window. So I had originally felt that I would get the camper where I lived at and leave from there. He told me exactly when and what to tell Donald, my husband, to tell my daughter and to tell my mother. He told me to only take my personal and my clothes and to leave everything else. I need to point out that he had been grooming me for years for learning to live without many material things. It was all very fast, like another whirlwind. I had to have lots of faith. That is how he was dealing with me, high levels of faith that only he can give. During the two weeks, I was given much confirmation from people that the Lord sent to me. I had received an email from one of my co-workers that was like an e-card. This person did not know that I was leaving. It had in it the scripture that no weapon formed against thee shall prosper. Isaiah 54, 17. I was amazed and praised him, the one who created me and everyone else. One of my last days there, he sent a co-worker of mine who was a great man of God, and he told of a story of a missionary woman, a great story of faith. 
After he told me the story, he began giving me some scriptures that had helped him in the past, one of which is the one that I had been saying to the Lord quite frequently then, and also that King Yeshua kept telling me. However, as my co-worker was telling me, Romans 8.31, What shall we then say to these things? If God be for us, who can be against us? My co-worker began to say the scripture, and the second or the third time that he said it, something happened. And he looked at me ever so sternly, and leaned forward in his chair, and looked at me in the eyes, and said, If God be for you, who can be against you? I had goosebumps, because... For I felt... I felt King Yeshua's fierceness of his word coming through my co-worker, and I also felt his eyes looking at me. My co-worker didn't exist at that moment. That was quite a powerful moment, and one I had never felt before. A day or so before this, I was crying. I was crying terribly, and asking God for help, and all of a sudden, I heard my email come through. So I looked at it, and it was a scriptural site. And I opened it up, and it had Hebrews 11 written in it. <clears throat> I knew that was, I knew what chapter that was, the chapter of faith. I praised the great Lord Almighty for helping me in my waning faith. I also had another co-worker <clears throat> who was another great man of God, who I had planned on seeing before I left, but hadn't as of that time. However, he came down and someone had told him I was leaving and I said I would be down to his office as soon as I could. When I got down there, the minute I mentioned prophecy ministry, he turned to the side of his computer and picked up a CD and said he knew that once I said prophecy, he knew that CD was for me. It was him preaching a sermon a few weeks prior to that saying, All in, I will not turn back. I couldn't believe my eyes when I read the title of it. I listened to it on the way home that day, and boy did it ever speak to me. It was as if it was solely made for me. Thank you and praise my wonderful and mighty God. He leaves me speechless. He is so great. And at this time, I'm going to stop this video and start another one, because I'm not sure what this camera is going to do. I love you all in Christ. Thank you for listening.